Hey, what's up, garden friends? How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Sitting out here with my Fetonias and thought they'd be fun to talk about for a few minutes. These right here are the Fetonia albavinus. The variety is called Pink Angel. These are plants that are seen very, very commonly in the big box stores, sold as house plants, little, little guys. Sometimes they're in baskets and they're not always the easiest plant to keep alive. There's some variables that go into growing them, so I thought we'd go ahead and chat about it. So for starters, the Fetonia albavinus, also called the Nerf plant. These are a true tropical plant growing zones 11 and up, indicating they do not like cool temperatures, nothing below 55 degrees. Native to areas like Peru, Ecuador, South America, Central America. This is an understory rainforest plant. And just knowing that alone, knowing where these plants are native to, that goes ahead and that lets us know some pretty specific things about the care based off of that climate that is. The main thing being that it is very warm and very humid, which is one of the things that lends these plants to being such awesome candidates for terrarium. Seeing as how they only get roughly six inches high, and I should say there is variability because there are lots of different varieties of these plants. Like I said, this one's called Pink Angel. The main difference is in the color of the veining and the leaves, but there are some that have different shaped leaves as well and therefore probably some slightly different growth habits. However, for the most part, about six inches high, maybe a foot or so of spread, and that can continue. These Fetonias grow by the stems come up, they elongate, they get weighed down, and they fall down on top of the soil. You can see these very hairy stems in here, and there's some hair on the petioles as well. When those come in contact with the soil, my finger being the stem, that's what I'm trying to demonstrate here, they put out roots and they keep on growing. These are also a good plant for top dressing to have as a ground cover around any other plants we have that are really tropical, like humid conditions. They add a lot of contrast. In the house, bright direct sun will probably scorch the leaves. But having them in a window with a curtain, something that's somewhat sheer, that can be nice for them. Yeah, while not a low light plant, also not one that needs full sun. In fact, full sun's not great for them. The key with these guys is actually watering. Because as I mentioned, they like humid conditions and a moist soil. Not soggy, not sopping wet, but moist. You kind of see this soil here is darker. It feels a little bit wet, not sopping wet. Like if you were to squeeze it, not much water, if any, would come out of it. Whereas this guy over here, you can see the light brown color. The pot doesn't weigh much. This one needs to be watered. Typically when the Fetonias need to be watered, if you aren't checking the soil, you will notice because the leaves will start to droop and curve. The plants will look kind of limp and lifeless. Go ahead and water them heavily. They should pop right back up. Drainage holes are important though. Have drainage holes in their pots because like I said, they don't want to be sitting in sopping wet conditions. As far as keeping the humidity up, keeping them with a pebble tray below them with water in it, as long as the bottom of the pot isn't in contact with the water, that can help. You can also miss the foliage. Some plants missing the foliage isn't really a great idea, but these guys right here, Fetonias, they're pretty tough. They don't seem to mind it. Because like I said, you got to consider where they come from. They come from a place where they're getting rained on all of the time. That is, however, with rainwater. You have really hard water that has a lot of TDS or a high TDS. That's the total dissolved solids basically somewhat dirty water then maybe using something purified to spray them with might be a little bit better ultimately a great thing to do with these guys if you're having struggles keeping them and the humidity is too low is go ahead and put them in a terrarium do really well in a terrarium setting there are a lot of different types out there you can use a very large glass bowl there are the ones that have like the little stands on them that are open in the front hanging terrariums might be a little bit small for these guys this is a plant that, if it is thriving, you will have to stay on top of pruning it. Pruning the plants is going to help encourage them to be more bushy, more full, for them to send out more growth from the sides and from the bottom. Keeping the flowers pruned off of them helps with that as well. The flowers are somewhat insignificant. This one was already done flowering, so I have no issue with cutting that off. It does look kind of impressive though when an entire clump of them, like ones that are in a big hanging basket, when those start to flower, it does look pretty neat, but there's not a lot of color to the flowers. Flowers are super tiny. I highly, highly doubt I'll be able to get that to show up on camera, but there's just a little teeny tiny hint of red on the lips of the flowers, but for the most part, it's not a lot to see. It does look pretty cool though when they're actually like a whole bunch of them. Fertilizing is always advantageous. When they're in the super duper active growth, fertilizing them monthly with an all-purpose fertilizer is just fine. During the winter months, if the conditions in your home are kind of cool, then I don't know that I would fertilize them very often. My main issue would be 
actually avoiding the plants rotting. I'm trying to find more of a warm location for them. They're not prone to anything specifically, but uh, it's always a good idea to watch out for spider mites, white fly, mealybugs, aphids. You can use systemics or horticultural oils to eradicate those problems should they arise. Uh, obviously, if you have these in a terrarium and like a live bioactive terrarium with potentially animals or really any bioactive terrarium, those tend to have lots of insects in them at least. It's a good idea to be careful with any pesticides. You probably want to avoid them altogether if you're trying to maintain the bioactive status of that environment. If you do happen to notice that the leaves are wilting and that it's not responding to being watered, that could be an indication of root rot, in which case pull that from the soil, get it dried out. Out, repot it and then from that point on probably want to find something to feed to the plant a systemic to help take care of that rot. I don't like to recommend any products specifically because it's just that causes all kinds of problems. We'll have different experiences with different things. The main thing is to get that dried out and go ahead and do the Google Schmoogle thing and find what works for you and even just what's available to you. Sometimes that's one of the problems with recommending products is that some of them things are regional. You don't know what everybody's gonna be able to get their hands on and that's one of the reasons that using clean water is kind of a nifty thing to do, more in that it's preventative. So with mine, because they're going to want to be watered more frequently, I probably won't be using my aquaponics water, only because they have a very moisture retentive soil and that water, even though it does run through a UV sterilizer, it's still going to raise the risk of molds and fungus and bacteria and things like rot. All kinds of issues could arise from it just because I'm going to be watering them more frequently than I would typically a lot of my other house plants. It is of course dependent on how long it takes the soil to dry out. As I mentioned before, some pruning helps keep these guys looking nice and full and bushy. Helps keep them from looking too leggy down below because since they can get about six inches high, you can cut those in half to encourage more growth to come out the bottoms. It's not too hard to propagate those cuttings either if that's something you wanted to do. Put them in a very clean sterile soil, slightly damp and put that entire thing into a plastic bag or put a plastic bag over it to maintain some humidity and uh, they should take root just fine. There are lots of different ways to do it though. Rooting hormone obviously you can dip that in there. That'll help with the process as well. Overall I like them mostly for being able to use them in terrariums and planting them up in other types of arrangements with other plants that also like some water because they just they add such a nice element of contrast. Not a ton of houseplants out there that have so much color so much vividness within the foliage especially ones that stay smaller. There's obviously always the crotons, but those, you know, they get bigger. This is something you can have, and you can put it in a hanging basket. You can have it on the tabletop, put it in your office, on your desk, potentially, you know, mist it every day with a spray bottle. Just so many fun uses. And they really bring in that exotic appeal. Something eye-catching with some contrast. You really just can't go wrong with them. And that's why I wanted to talk about them. What are some of your experiences with the Fetonia, with the nerve plant? Comment down below, let me know. You can hit me up on Instagram, at Tropical Plant Party, I'll follow you back. Always fun being plant nerds together on there. Like I said, just comment down below. It's fun talking to everybody. Oh, and don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps the videos a lot, makes a big difference on the channel, and I truly do appreciate it, so thank you very much for doing that. And subscribe as well, I upload multiple times a week, so don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. I have some exciting plans for these guys that I'll be getting to in the next few weeks, and I will be sure to share that with everybody here on YouTube and on Instagram, and Snapchat, and hopefully Twitter, all those fun places. I'll keep you posted. Okay, that's all. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a beautiful life, and that everything is wonderful for you. And as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.